Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your love tonight. And we thank you, Lord, because you are good all the time. And all the time you are good. We reverence you, Lord. We reverence your name. And we thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that forever, oh, Lord, your word is, a, uh, is settled, Father. And we thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. And we thank you, Lord, in this holy week, this passion week, Father, we thank you for the price that you've paid, hallelujah, and everything that you went through leading up until, amen, Resurrection Sunday. We thank you tonight. Let us be edified through your word, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and thank God. I want to teach tonight, praise the Lord, amen, the fourth part of our teaching, follow through. The fourth part of our teaching, follow through. Amen. Follow through part part four. Amen. Hallelujah. And tonight I'm going to specifically be talking about enduring. Amen. Or the power to endure. Follow through part four. Enduring. Amen. It's time for us to endure. One of the things that we've been talking about on Wednesday nights for the past several weeks. Amen. Scripture says, and be not weary in well doing, for you shall reap in due season. If you faint not, amen, that you'll reap in due season if you faint not. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, amen, we have been equipped through the word of God of how to go through, how to maintain, how to follow through on the promises of God. And I'm telling you, we are seeing testimonies weekly of people who are staying in faith, people who are believing God and seeing great manifestation in their life. Amen. Because they refuse to get weary and well-doing. And we're seeing some awesome testimonies of people reaping of the very uh, goodness of the Lord. Uh, and so as I position my heart to seek uh, the face of God, as this is Holy Week, Passion Week, we know that a Resurrection Sunday is this Sunday. I've just been meditating, and one of the things, I read this on Monday night, our prayer call, I read this, amen, hallelujah, and all that's been in my mind, amen, what the scripture says in Hebrews, amen, and Jesus endured the cross, he endured the cross, and I've been thinking, praise the Lord, as God has been having us not be weary in well-doing, teaching us how to keep our stamina, keeping us how to keep our faith up, keeping us, amen, how to remain, amen, yet and still, praise the Lord, hallelujah, uh, uh, let's look at the word, Hebrews 12 and 2, Hebrews 12, 12 and 2. Hebrews 12 and 2. And it reads, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him <clears throat> endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. And again, one of the things that, 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 that was highlighted to me, praise the Lord, is he endured the cross. He endured the cross. Um, when we begin to look at the, the moment one hears that word endure, what comes to our mind? Pain, hardship, sorrows, suffering, J just to mention a few things. And, and Hebrews 12 and 2 says, look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. For the joy who was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. This implies, amen, that the cross experience, which we understand, which later led to his glorification, was not a, uh, a pleasant experience, praise the Lord. And if the Holy Spirit opens your eyes to see what Jesus went through, amen, uh, from the point of his arrest to his crucifixion, you will forever be grateful for the price that he has paid for you and me. Uh, he was scourged, amen, until he began to bleed badly. And when you understand the price that he paid, he bled badly from his back, his face, his neck, uh, his legs, and his chest. After that, after being beaten and scorned and all that type of things, the Bible says he was forced to carry a cross. Uh, in other words, a, a heavy piece of furniture, can I say it like that, up, up, up to Golgotha. Mind you, the wounds he sustained, amen, from the scourging were not dressed. So having to carry that, that heavy cross, praise the Lord, after, being, after bleeding and having wounds. No doubt he was hungry, he was thirsty. He had not uh, even eaten or drank, drank anything for 24 hours. He was tired, he was weary, and he had lost a lot of blood. He was in great pains as his wounds were fresh. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that in, in the midst of everything that he suffered, watch this, he endured the cross. 
Jesus at this point could have easily called down angels to defend him and destroy armies. Hallelujah. And th th this would mean that humanity would be doomed, but he did not, praise the Lord. The Bible says he endured the cross. In other words, he endured the pain. He endured the torture. He endured the shame. And Philippians says, wherefore God has uh, hath highly exalted him and given a name that is above uh, every other name. Just as Christ endured a lot, and he is our example, as he endured pain and shame and sorrow on his way to glorification, you and I must endure, amen, things that we have to walk through. Now, not things that we're staying at, but things that we have to walk through. Hallelujah. My first point tonight, enduring is necessary. Why don't you type that in? Enduring is necessary. And, and I don't know, I don't believe I'm the only one out here tonight, but even in my life, there are times that I just had to endure some things. That there are times that I just had to bear some things. There are times that I just had to put up with some things. And quite frankly, had to put up with some things much longer than I would have preferred to do. But, but you have to thank God, amen, hallelujah, because even in your Christian walk, you will endure some things. I don't know what you're facing tonight, amen, but I want to admonish you to endure. Hallelujah. If Jesus endured the cross, you can endure even the very thing that you're going through. If you are full-time working and going to school at the same time, don't give up on your education and focus on your work alone. Endure it. You will graduate soon. Can I say that tonight? Hallelujah. If you're struggling in a relationship, praise the Lord. Believe God. Whatever is happening, endure because Christ, Christ, God is working in the background. Hallelujah. And I believe that he'll restore peace even to your relationships. Hallelujah. Are you facing persecution? Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe even in the workplace, maybe among, amen, those, amen, who you think you're connected to. Are people calling you names and making fun of your walk with God? There's some things on this side you just going to have to endure. There's some things you can't run from, you can't hide under the rock. You have to endure. And you got to remember, you're not trying to please man or meet man's standard. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you want God to be pleased. And Jesus understood. He endured the cross because he understood he had a God to glorify and a destiny to fulfill. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 enduring is necessary. And that's why the Bible says if you're a soldier in the army of the Lord, if you're saved and you're born again, there's going to be some things that you and I are going to have to walk through. There's going to be some things that you and I are going to have to follow through on and you're going to have to endure. Yes. Scripture says it like this, and endure hardship. Yeah. As a good soldier. There's some things you're going to walk through it, praise the Lord, but you ought to endure hardship as a good soldier. Next point. This is not short term. Hallelujah. This is not Short term, is that all right? Hallelujah. It has to be in our makeup. If we're going to walk this walk and run this race, this Christian race, hallelujah, it has to be in our makeup, has to be in our DNA, has to be in our focus that there are some things that we're going to have to endure, praise the Lord, and it's not short term, praise the Lord. Go to Matthew 24 and 13. Matthew 24 and 13. This is not short term. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what the scripture says. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, he who endures to the end shall be saved. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Here's what I'm saying. It's not enough to endure briefly. Watch this. We must endure to the end. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. It's not enough to endure because I don't care. Listen, you can go through something and come out of it. You never know. It'll be something else that you're going to have to endure. Hallelujah. You ever said if it's not one thing, it's something else. There's some things as long as you are living in this life, you're going to have to endure. And the Bible says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. The passage translation, Matthew 24 and 13 says, but hold your hope firmly to the end, and you will experience life and deliverance. 
but hold on, uh, but, but hold your hope firmly to the end, not temporary. This ain't a temporary thing. I'm going to hold on now, then I'm going to let go. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Hold, but hold your hope firmly to the end, and you will experience life and deliverance. And sometimes you got to pray, God, please give me the grace to endure to the end. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you need that. It is a word because if you don't endure, you can find yourself in some situations. Uh huh. That's why the exhortation came, praise the Lord. I believe in the book of Galatians says, you did run well, but who did hinder you? At what point did you stop enduring? We're going to have to go through some things, folks, and we can't get weary. The scripture says to everything there is a season. And watch this, and seasons change. But no matter what season you in, we ought to be found as believers enduring. Are you going through a hard time tonight? Maybe you've lost your job, or maybe you're dealing with the death in a family, a uh, death in your family, or or maybe you're just not sure if anything good can happen to you. Whatever you're dealing with tonight, I want you to know you're not alone. And something good can come from the tough spot that you're in right now. God has promised it. Praise the Lord. Jesus experienced hard times too. He endured the cross. And the Bible says, if any man follow me, let him pick up his own cross and follow me. The road to the cross was no small matter, but Jesus endured it. Hallelujah. But watch this. He had to decide to go through it. He had to decide to set his focus, look into Jesus, praise the Lord. Look into the author and finish up by faith. He, he is our example, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, he is our example. You, you, you have to decide to go through. You can make a decision to stay stuck or you can decide to go through. Hallelujah. Why don't you type that in? I'm going through. Come on, type that in tonight. I'm going through. Yes, I am. I'm not making a decision to stay stuck. I'm not making a decision to stay in a pity party. I'm not making a decision to stay where I am. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going through. There was a point, amen, even that Jesus asked the Lord, amen, asked his Father God, amen, was it necessary? If it be thy will, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thy will be done. Just like Jesus had to make a choice, you and I also have to decide that even in hard times, I'm going to go through it. And here's my next point. Call it good. Type that in. Call it good. If you're with me tonight, call it good. Call it good. See, we're in a time right now the Lord says, amen, what you call it is what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. Speak those things that be not as though it were. You have to call it good. Hallelujah. You know, Friday, we're coming up to Good Friday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And some would ask the question, is Good Friday really good? Oh, I'm getting excited tonight. Hallelujah. As we celebrate the resurrection, praise the Lord, I like to look at how we go through our hard times. I think we also go through our private crucifixion and resurrection on somewhat a regular basis. Hallelujah. But you got to understand something. Friday always comes before Sunday. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to just see la and meditate on that tonight. Friday always comes before Sunday. And if you don't have, if you don't learn how to endure, you won't make it till Sunday. I can't get nobody. Praise the Lord. If you don't learn how to go through and endure, you won't make it to Sunday. Praise the Lord. Have you ever wondered why we refer to Jesus' death as Good Friday? Since it's a day that involves so much pain, agony, and heartache? Well, it's because the result of this particular Friday, Christ's resurrection from the dead on Sunday was good. I said as a result of this Friday, it turned out good. And in our daily lives, we need to believe that when we go through hard times, the result, 
my God will be good. That's why I can say on a bad day is still good. That's why I can say on my worst day is still good because as a result, oh, I'm getting happy tonight. Hallelujah. As a result of what's happening in my now, mm, Romans 8 and 28 says, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. If you with me tonight by faith, type in, the result of this will be good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care what I'm dealing with. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how much it hurts me. I don't care if I'm in the valley. The result of this will be good. So I choose to say on a bad Friday, it's a good Friday. Because when Sunday comes, ooh, I'm getting a little excited tonight. The result of this will be good. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. For our light affliction is but for a moment, but works for a far more exceeding weight of glory. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. The result will be good. Woo! The result of this will be good. The result of this test, the result of this trial, the result of this affliction. There will be glory after this. But when we're hurting, probably one of the most challenging things for us to remember, hallelujah, is that God is going to work it out for our good. I said, wow, we're hurting. One of the most challenging things is to remember that God is going to work it out for our good. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good. Hallelujah. That's a key verse when we're going through disappointing times. Sometimes it doesn't appear like, praise God, that's the way it will happen. But you still have to believe in spite of how bad it looks, in spite of how dark it is, that all things are going to work together. It's the place that we always come back to in every trial that we face. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, hallelujah, this doesn't mean the trials are necessarily good. But God can work them out for our good because he's good like that. Mm, because he's awesome like that. And hallelujah. And you have to be some kind of awesome God to be able to take bad things and turn them around for good. I hope you're getting encouraged tonight. I, I, I really hope you, you're getting encouraged tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if we, if we have to take detours because of our stupidity or because of some mistakes we made, you can trust God that God is like in alignment with you. It'll work for my good. I like to say no person on earth and no devil in hell can keep you from God's will. Hallelujah. I said no person on earth or no devil in hell can keep you from God's will. Hallelujah. Follow through. You got to follow through and you have to endure. What am I saying to you on this Wednesday night? Praise the Lord. My next point, appreciate growth. Hallelujah. I know I'm going a little fast tonight, but I hope you're right there with me. Appreciate growth. Because the crucifixion, growing in hard times. It's comforting to really believe that things will work out okay. Even on a day like Good Friday, with so much suffering and pain. When nothing made sense and everything went, was hard, God worked it all out for good, bringing the greatest blessing to mankind ever. We can believe Friday was good because the result of it brought, hallelujah, because of what the result of it brought, praise God, not because of what happened at the time. I'll say that again. We can believe that Friday was good because of the result it brought, not because of what happened at the time. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't have to worry because it's the working for me. It's the result of it. Didn't feel good while I'm going through it, but the result of it. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. The result of this is going to be good. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I know after having gone through some hard time, I looked back and thought I wouldn't be half the person I am had I not went through that. 
praise the Lord, hallelujah, wouldn't be as strong as I am had I not went that, had I not went through that, Wouldn't, wouldn't have learned some lessons that I learned had not I walked through it. That's why David said, it was good for me that I had been afflicted. It's amazing. We, we, we really seem to grow during hard times. But I think it's because during those times, we really press into God and go to a deeper level in our relationship with him. Why? Because we have to. <laughs> Why? Because God, if you don't do it, it won't get done. It's our only choice if we want to make it through the difficulties. And when we trust God, he gives us the comfort of knowing that he can work bad things out for our good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My next point, understand both sides. Understand. On this Holy Week, on this Passion Week, you got to understand both sides. You know, it's two sides of the cross. Woo, teach tonight, Bishop. It's two sides of the cross. Just like in general, there's usually two sides to everything. And and the cross has two, a crucifixion side and a resurrection side. And Jesus had to endure one side to get to the other. I'm about to shout and I'm about to run. (laughs) Jesus had to endure one side to get to the other. Hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. And, th- and that's what you got to do, beloved, hallelujah. You, when, you got, when you know that God has a plan for your life, if you want to reach all God has for you, you got, to, you got to bear your own cross. You have to endure the cross, but on the other side of it. Well, what, what did Hebrews 12 and 2 says? Jesus, for the joy of obtaining the prize, of the other side of the cross, the resurrection, he endured the pain. Woo. Because understood, if I suffer with him, I'll reign with him. I can't get nobody. Glory to God. And so for the joy of obtaining the prize on the other side of the cross, he endured the cross. Sometimes you got to tell yourself, if you can just get through this, if you can just make it through this, if you can just make it through this tough time, if you can just make it through this uh, tough season, hallelujah, if you can just endure this season of sacrifice, this season of transition, this season of uh, of, of toughness, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. And and so you have to endure. Like Jesus, sometimes you, you got to endure some bad things. You have to endure some things that you don't necessarily prefer. Here, let me make it simple tonight. Simply to endure means to outlast the devil. Whoa. To endure means to outlast the devil. To endure means to be so to be steadfast long enough to let the trial do whatever it's going to do in our lives to get from one side of the cross to another. Hallelujah. Why don't you type that in? I must endure. In other words, I just got to outlast some things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you, you got to outlast the lie. You can let folk, you know, folk will lie on you and say all manner of evil. Sometimes you just got to outlast last it. So sometimes you, you just have to outlast some things. We must endure. We must endure. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, beloved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here's the thing. Praise the Lord. We don't just go from Friday to Sunday. Whew. Jesus. We don't just go from Friday to Sunday. You have to endure Saturday, which I think oftentimes is the hardest thing to do. See, everybody want resurrection. Everybody want to get up in power. But you don't just go, whoo, Lord Jesus, from Friday to Sunday, praise the Lord. You got to learn how to endure Saturday, which oftentimes is the hardest thing to do. I'll call it the middle. 
See, in everything, can I teach this tonight? In everything, there's a beginning, there's an end, and there is a middle. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna reap what God has called us to do, we gotta work the middle. And see, a lot of folk know what it's like to go through, they know what it's like to come out, they're expecting to come out, but but the danger zone is in the middle. Because because we don't want to stay steadfast in the middle of it. While we're waiting, praise God, that, that's when that weariness comes in, and we want to get distracted while waiting. We all know we got a story and we all know that we got a manifestation but you got to work the middle. Come on, why don't you type that in? Work the middle. Work the middle. Woo! When Sunday comes, but you got to work the middle. Lord Jesus. See, see, see. See, woo! See, the beginning is sometimes a little bit exciting because it's a new thing. You ever started something? It's, it's exciting because it's a new thing. And the end is certainly exciting because it's where we experience the victory. Oh, but that middle is where it's tricky. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. It's the Saturdays. Hallelujah. The Saturday may become harder than the Friday because the Saturday we're in the grave. And we're not sure, hallelujah, what's going to happen next. Oh, my God, hallelujah. You know, it's when that place that it seemed like you had a standstill. You know that God has protected you, he's preserved you, and now you're waiting on the answer, you're waiting on the manifestation, and you don't know what's going to happen next. See, most of the time, we don't know how long the middle is going to last. I can't get nobody in here. Although God, although God knows, oftentimes he's not telling Teach, Bishop. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And how many know oftentimes he's great at keeping secrets? Yes, he is. Praise the Lord. And some of you are in the middle right now. And the tricky part about the middle is you don't know how long it's going to last. And although God knows, he's not telling and you better slow down and you better slow down and read your Bible because we say weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning and you think it's just for a night. But the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. <laughs> it may. Hallelujah. So sometimes it might be some nights. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for a night. That means I may have to stay on this, stay in this a little longer than I thought. That means there may be an extension to this affliction. Praise the Lord. Now, now, now the victory is promised, but it may endure. I'm teaching tonight. I'm teaching tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You have to endure. Type that in. You have to endure Saturday. You have to endure Saturday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have to endure. We need to remember that when you're going through the middle of something, we can be assured that Sunday always comes after Friday, but you got to be patient. You have to endure Saturday. We have to endure. Woo! We, ha, ha, ha. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. It's Saturday in somebody's life. You're in the middle of something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has kept you. You're in the middle of something. Praise the Lord. You see that you're in the middle of something. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's Saturday in your life. And when, when, when you endure Saturday, that means you have to outlast the devil. You have to outlast the enemy. You have to outlast the frustration. You have to outlast the impatience. Remain steadfast, don't give up, and don't quit. And when we do, you'll enjoy the resurrection benefits and blessings that come with Sunday. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. And what am I saying to you tonight on this live? We have to make it through, folks. That's why the Bible said the Lord is good to them who, 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 who wait on him. Praise the Lord. That's why we cannot afford to get weary in well-doing. You can't get weary on Saturday. You too close to Sunday. You didn't come too far to turn around. So, so I remember, I remember, I remember that Jesus, whoo, he didn't just get up. He endured the cross. Huh? We're going to face some times, but the only way to do it is to go through it. <laughs> Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Whether you hit by unexpected circumstance, suffering for doing something wrong or resisting temptation, hallelujah. But waiting on the other side of hard time is obtaining the prize. For the joy set before him, praise the Lord. He endured the cross because he knew it was something coming after. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And, and what we have to do is adjust, adjust ourselves, adjust our mindset. See, the Bible said that, that, that God is the same yesterday, for today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He doesn't change, but we must change. Woo! I said he doesn't change, but, he, but we must change. We got some changing to do. We got some reconditioning to do. We have some adjusting to do. Praise the Lord. After resurrection power, glory to God. We have some, re, some readjusting to do. Hallelujah. Because one thing, hallelujah, I just got one more thing to say, and I'm going to let you go. One thing Satan doesn't want uh, the believer to walk in is to stand on the word regardless of the cause. And, and, and Hebrews 10 and 36 says, we have need of patience. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Can I talk to you tonight and let you know some things just take time? Become, be, becoming discouraged because it isn't happening for you overnight or allowing yourself to become inconsistent in your obedience. Hallelujah. Those things will only delay the process. Stay the course, stay consistent. Everything God promised you will come soon enough, but you got to have patience. See, if you're going to endure the cross, you got to have patience. The Lord, I said, Lord, how did you endure? How did you endure the cross with patience? In the Bible, the Greek word for patience is hupomone. Hupomone, praise the Lord. And that's translated, amen, in the Greek, that word patience is hupomone. It's translated 29 times in the Bible as patience. The word hupomone, praise the Lord, is compounded of two words, hupa, praise the Lord, which means under, to be under something that's heavy, praise the Lord. And the second word is mone, which means to stay, remain, continually abide in one place. So hupomone, praise the Lord, hallelujah, is the ticket that enables you to stay on and finish the course despite obstacles, difficulties, disappointments, or attacks. You walk in hupomone, that patience, praise God, patience continuance, praise God, when you refuse to consider giving up. See, that's the place I'm walking in. I refuse to give up, and it's hard. You may be under some stuff. Ah, you got a cross to bear, but I refuse to give up. The enemy hates hupomone. H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E. H-U-P-O. M-O-N-E. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hupomone is what you see in the life of Jesus. Hupomone is what you see in the life of the Apostle Paul. Hupomone is what you see in all those who say they are disciples of Jesus. John 15 and 7 says, if you abide, Mone, in me, and my word abide, Mone, in you, you shall ask what you will, and it will be done. See, Mone, the, the second part of that word means you have to come to a place where you believe something and you are not going to move from it. Woo! This is how secure we're supposed to be. I believe something, and I'm not going to move away from it. I believe what God has said. I believe what God has promised, and I'm not going to move away from it. Hoopa and Mone mean to preserve, to remain under as to things and circumstances to endure. He endured the cross with patience. Hoopa Mone, he endured because he understood something was coming. Hoopa Mone refers to the quality of character that does not allow one to surrender under circumstances. See, when you walk in that God kind of patience, praise the Lord, you got a quality of character. And the only way a person can have this quality is to be born again, praise the Lord, to be a son and a daughter of the Most High. Hupomone is a state of mind that declares, this is what the Word of God says, this is what the Word of God promises, and I'm standing on it, and I'm not moving. 
When you look in the Bible in Luke 8, uh, in Luke 8 chapter, praise God, at verse 8, it was talking about how the sower sold the word. It says, and other fell on good ground and sprung up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when Jesus said these things, he cried, he that have ears, let him hear. Hallelujah. In other words, it talked about how a sower went to sow seed, the word of God. If the seed of the word of God, praise the Lord, what has to happen before a seed can produce? It has to die. So when you put the word of God into you, you have to die, praise God. Your flesh, your will, what you think has to die in order for that word to produce in your life. Is that all right? Hallelujah. The entrance of his word brings life. So when God sends his word, tells you what it's going to be, praise the Lord. Now, 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 now your soul is rammed. You, you got to die and say, God, I believe your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, but when the word falls on good ground, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, kept it, it brings forth fruit. Now think about it. I'm almost done. Think about it. When a farmer plants a seed, he plants a seed today. He plants a seed today and he goes out tomorrow and there's a sprout. No, 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 no. He may not see a sprout for two weeks. And if he pulls up that sprout, he's not going to see the benefit of the seed. Hallelujah. The same is true because there's so much that's going on. We have to renew our mind and we have to walk in hoopamone. Steadfast patience. Is that all right? Hallelujah. That, that even if I'm not seeing the results right now, I'm not going to be anxious and pull up the little things I see. No, I got to water the seed. I got to hang on. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to compromise. Hallelujah. Give me praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke 4th chapter, verse 18 through 21. Hallelujah. I need patience continuance. Glory to God. I got to endure some things. Uh, uh, Luke 4th uh, chapter, verse 18. Abraham, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to what was spoken to him, so shall his seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. The Bible says he was fully persuaded. That word fully means to be full to capacity. Hallelujah. There was no room for doubting in Abraham's mind. He knew, praise God, what he knew. He knew what God promised, and he knew what God said would come to pass. See, that's all a part, hallelujah, of Fupamone, praise the Lord. He was settled in his mind. He was fully persuaded. You understand? Do you understand why we come and keep getting the word? Why we come and keep hearing the word? Why we come, keep coming to church? Why we get in the word for ourselves? Because I'm trying to stay fully persuaded. And I can't back away from the word. I can't back away from what God has said about my children. I can't get thrown off and do my own thing and think I'm going to stay fully persuaded. Waited. Hallelujah. I'm not going to put distance between me and God and think I'm going to stay fully persuaded. The reason we're called to walk close to God is because I'm trying to stay fully persuaded. Because when Abraham was fully persuaded, his promise came to pass. Fully persuaded mean, hallelujah, I'm filled to capacity. I'm hearing so much revelation. I'm hearing so much word. I got a place in God, hallelujah, that I'm fully persuaded. You can't make me doubt them. I know too much about it. That's why I can't drift. That's why I can't do my own thing. That's why I got to draw my mind in because I need to be fully persuaded. Why don't you type that in, fully persuaded? That's why I run hard for the Lord. That's why I run harder than I've ever ran in my life. Bless the Lord, because I'm trying to stay fully persuaded. There was no room for doubt in his mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, type it in. I have no room for doubt. Come on, I have no room for doubt. Praise the Lord. And every time I hear the word of faith, hallelujah, my prayer is that it drives out doubt doubt if it's operating in my life, if it's trying to creep in, that it drive out fear, that it drive out torment. 
Hallelujah. And we have to move into that place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glory, the Bible says, in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience or hupomone. And hupomone or patience experience. And experience hope. And hope make him not ashamed because the love of God shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Because of patience continuous, because of enduring, hallelujah, and enduring patience, hupomone, because we stand on the word of God, we don't back down. We have experience with God knowing that he will come through. Press the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if he doesn't come through Monday, there's Tuesday. And if he doesn't come through Tuesday, there's Wednesday. And then if it don't happen Wednesday, there's always Thursday. And if it don't happen Thursday, then there's Friday. There's Saturday. There's Sunday. See, see, that's what that patience, endurance me. As long as I have to endure this, but I'm not giving up on my healing. Praise the Lord. Some of you believe in God to come off some medication. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It may didn't happen this month, but next month. I, I'm believing God. I'm fully persuaded. And when you're fully persuaded, you have to watch your posture. And I'm almost done. You have to watch your posture. You must be willing and obedient. Bible says if you're willing and obedient, woo, you will eat the good of the land. And you have to check yourself. If I'm going to reap what God has called me to reap, if I'm going to follow through, part of my follow through is to be willing and obedient. And you have to check yourself because sometimes some of you are willing, but you're not obedient. Some of you willing, but you're not consistent. Watch this. And then some of you obey, but you're mad about it. Ooh. And I don't know about you, but if, 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 if you're mad about it, please don't do it for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says, ooh. That's why you got to check your attitude. You got to check your heart posture when you believe in God for something. Listen, you can't, you can't just obey and be upset about it. If you're willing and obedient, my God, that's why you got to get closer to God. You can't be obedient and not be willing. That's why the Bible says even in your giving, praise the Lord, do it with a cheerful heart. Be glad about it. Don't do it grudgingly. Don't do it reluctantly. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You can't, you can't be willing and, and obedient and not receive the blessing. I'm going to say that again. You can't be willing and obedient and not receive the blessing. If it ain't happened now, it's going to happen because God is the God of his word. He backs up his word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You got to stay obedient. You got to stay obedient. You got, and you have to check your posture. You know, the first miracle that Jesus worked, when Jesus turned water into wine, Mary set a standard for anyone who would ever need a miracle when she said, whatever he says to you, do it. <laughs> Woo! I said, when Jesus turned water into wine, Mary set the standard for anyone who would ever need a miracle. And that standard was, whatever he says to you, do it. My God, hallelujah, you have to be willing and obedient. When you want to reap the promises of God in your life, you have to do the word. Is that all right? When you, when you want to have a brat day and act like a brat, you got to say, wait a minute, this is not the day for me to act like a small brat because I didn't get it my way. I didn't get it when I wanted to. Hallelujah. If Jesus had to endure the cross, I'm going to have to endure some things too. And sometimes you got to bind the brat spirit. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you got to bind the times when you acting like a small brat. Come on, type that in. Bind that brat spirit. Glory to God. Like, 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 like you too good or, or like it doesn't have to happen to you. No, 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 no. That's the standard. Mary set the standard. If anyone who would ever need a miracle when, 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 he, when she said, whatever he says to you, do it. Come on. If he spits on the mud and tell you rub that mud in your face, you, if you want the miracle, whatever he says, do, do it. The man of God tell you go jump it, dip yourself in the water seven times. If you want to be healed, do it. See, that's the prerequisite for a miracle. But see, we, we don't want to be obedient. Because we don't want to follow through. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We don't want to follow through. 
James 1, James, the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ of the 12 tribes, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience or hupomone, steadfast patience, patience continuing. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says, and let, hallelujah, and let, hallelujah, patience have its perfect work in you. And let, hallelujah. See, you have to decide when you face with a circumstance or a situation whether or not you're going to let hupomone work in you, whether or not you're going to let patience work. You have to decide. Now, you got to say, wait a minute, I can go through this impatiently. I can go through this, praise the Lord, hallelujah, or, I'm, or I can endure this as a good soldier. But let patience have her perfect work in you. Hallelujah. Now, I'll close again with this. Bless the Lord. Hebrews 10 and 35, cast uh, not away your confidence, praise the Lord, which have a great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, of hupomone. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Hallelujah. You got to outlast it. You got to outlast it. You know, you know, some folk will speak words over your life, praise the Lord, and some of it might be true, and some of it might be false, but sometimes you got to learn how to not pay attention to that and outlast it. Outlast the lie. Eventually, we had to find something else to talk about. Outlast the rumor. Eventually, they're going to have to find somebody else to talk about. I remember years ago, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I was so, so young starting pastor, and, you know, and people would say stuff like, he's too young to pastor. Well, I was young. I was young. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, it didn't mean no good to argue that I was young. I was young. But, but, but now I'm, I'm young and now I'm older and I'm still in this thing. So, so now what are you going to talk about? <laughs> oh, he started pastor and he was single. Well, that, that, that wasn't true. Okay. Okay. Th that was then. This is now. now what are you going to talk about? See, sometimes you, you, don't, you don't address some things. You just, you just outlive it. Because the new news eventually is going to be old news and somebody else is going to find something else to talk about. And you don't have time. to. You have to outlast. And that's, what, that's what endure means. You got to outlast it. They talk about your past. Well, you can't erase your past. If that was your past, that's what it was. Praise the Lord. I don't got to keep condemning. When you know God has set you free and you're not who you used to be, just outlast it. Outlive it. Well, okay, whatever. Okay. Until you get some new news. If you don't get any new news, life moves on. You got to endure it. You got to outlast it. Praise the Lord. You got to outlast it. Somebody say outlast it. Outlast it. Some stuff you can't do nothing about. You messed up? Yeah, I did mess up. You failed? Yes, I did fail. Okay. I can't change that. What I can do is get up and know that his grace is sufficient. What I can do is get back in the race and keep going. What I can do is renew my focus. You just got to outlast it. You argue about stuff that, look, okay. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. What does that tell us? After you receive the word, after we've stored it in our hearts. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. After we've decided that there is nothing that is going to pull away. Is that all right? See, sometimes sometime I believe the Lord allows us to wait to see. Praise the Lord. I'm going to see how real this thing is in your heart. I'm going to see how real you really believe that. And, 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 if, and you, if you have to wait longer than the deadline, I'm going to see if this thing is really established in your heart. I'm going to see, praise God, do you really believe it's going to come to pass? Endure. Endure. How do we do it? Looking to Jesus. Romans 12 and 2. The author and finisher of our faith. How do we endure it? Hallelujah. For the joy that was set before, he endured. Hupomone. Patience continuance. He endured the cross. Despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Folks, we run in this race. Hallelujah. I said we run in this race. Praise the Lord. And we run in the race we've already won in the first place. Jesus already finished the course for us. 
And this is what hupomone it, it, it communicates. This is what we have to do, this steadfast spirit of not getting weary. This is how we endure. This is how it fights our battle. That it, hallelujah. This, this is that yet and still thing. This is that yet and still thing. It doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, praise God, hallelujah, what you believe or what you think or what you say. If it doesn't line up with God's word, praise God, I'm dismissed. I'm standing on the promises of God, praise God. And you have to allow hupomone to live in you, to drive you, to take a stand for truth. Hallelujah, I will not compromise. I'm too close to compromise. Hallelujah, whatever God says in his word, that's what it's going to be. That's my standard, hallelujah, nothing else. Nothing else. But you have to make a decision to be all that God has called you to be. You have to make a decision, hallelujah, to stay in this race. And you have to endure the cross. No cross, no crown. And when, when folks see that God has elevated you, when he's lifted you, when he's blessed your life, and they don't understand it, they don't understand how you endure that cross. They don't understand how you, after you endured the cross, how you had to wait. You dealt with a crazy Friday, dealt with a Saturday. And God raised you up, praise the Lord, a resurrection power on the inside of you even on Sunday. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. But we have to endure. We have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. I thank you in this holy week, this passion week, I've obeyed you and given your people your word tonight. And I thank you, Lord, that we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in our season. Hallelujah. Whatsoever we do, it shall prosper. And I say that we shall not be moved. I think that life has come from this word. Strength has come from this word. Encouragement has come from this word. And we'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you for the grace to endure. Thank you for the power to endure. Thank you for the ability to go through. Thank you, Lord, because we know on the other side of this, hallelujah, is greater than, than, than what he is right now. Bless you, Lord. I pray for grace for everyone that's in the middle of something. Everyone that's in the middle of something. Glory to God. We praise you in the middle of it. We honor you in the middle of it. We bless your name in the middle of it. And we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and thank God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.